Second serves with a break point on a racket and Maioli unable to get the ball in play. And the coaching staff uh, in that front row. It's okay, Nick says. It's okay. Court's open. Ooh, that was a close one. It's the line. That was a very close one. Pretty flat forehand. Doesn't have a lot of topspin on this shot. going to give her this game. <laughs> this point, each woman with 20 unforced errors. Yeah, Maioli certainly has gotten through the nerves portion of this final and uh, striking the ball convincingly from both wings. But this is an inexperienced game because this that she's been a little sloppy this game and every player knows how important the first game in a set is. And Hingis holds. Maioli had three more chances to break. And Eva Maioli owns the opening set. Wow, one in nine. Now one in 12 after three chances to open the second set. Love one. S'il vous plaît, les joueurs sont prêts. Merci. S'il vous plaît. Very effective, and she needs to force herself to come in. Technically, not a sound volley, but even if she swings at it like a ground stroke, I think she can win the point. Well, another good serve placement. Tina Hingis has shown us in the past that when she is losing, that she does go to plan B. She can be flexible. Let's see if she does that here. She's done it in every other match. Getting her off the court, a sharp angle there, opening up the whole court. Very impressive 
Service game for Eva Maioli. One all in the second. And it's game four, the NBA Finals coming up tomorrow night. NBA Showtime starts things at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. And Carl Malone and the Jazz host Michael Jordan and the Bulls in Salt Lake City. It all starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific here on NBC. 1 o'clock Paris time. 1 to 4. We just kind of take a little nap and then... Uh, after the men's final tomorrow and catch game four. <laughs> now this time Hingis dictating the point. John Bill. Very much a pattern. Who's ever dictating the point? Ninety percent of the time wins, wins that point. So it's almost like from the first shot you have to be aggressive. Oh. She has a chance at another second serve here. ball around the court beautifully. We expect Martina Hingis to be doing that. Martina Down on the drop. defensive. This match remindful four years ago when a similar underdog, Mary Jo Fernandez, won the opening set against Steffi Groff, putting pressure on Groff, who then went on to win 6-2, 6-4. And the pressure now uh, seems to be building against Hingis. This is very much a mental match for Martina Hingis. There's nothing technically wrong with her game so far. It's just, I think she just had such an emotional match against Monica Sells. That was the biggest win that she's had in a Grand Slam event this year. As Monica had won this tournament three times. And now to come out here two days later and, and to play against a player that she doesn't have as much respect for her, it, it's tough. <laughs> Martina doesn't have power. What is that? Down, down. Thank you to, to playing doubles a lot because she gets a lot of practice on the overheads, the volleys, serving and coming to the net. It's really helped her to become an all-court player. Down, down. Well, she's shown that backhand is a good friend for her today. Not many mistakes, and she's uh, created some big winners. Double fall to Deuce, her third. If she's going to win this tournament, she has to be making those shots. Those are the easiest shots in the whole match, those second serves. Yeah. Oh, Hingis holds it. Too. You could hear her breathing. She's been battling a virus all this week as well and has served very well. Only eight points lost on serve in the match. Well, it's great that she just didn't walk out on the court, just happy to be there, you know, reach the finals and, and no expectations. I mean, she it looks to me like she really yes. believes she, that she can win this match, and very few people in the crowd are believers. Yeah, she hasn't given Hingis any hope yet of a break point.
down. Martina, you can see it in her face. She's trying to figure out what can I do? What can I change in my game? Why am I losing? Well, you've pointed out before that's one of her strengths. She will adjust. She will change her strategy. Well, she'll start playing more aggressively and we'll be seeing a little more variety. Drop shots coming to the net. Can't do that, though. Can't. That's the weaker side, though, that forehand side. She tried to run around that backhand, got a little too close and hit the ball a little too flat. One of the first times we've seen her off balance. And I think she sees that as soon as she sees Maioli off the court or on the run, Maioli's now starting to spray a few balls. It has to be encouraging for Martina Hingis to see that. Court. Martina Hingis once again trying that drop shot too far back behind the baseline. It's a good play, but you really should be inside the baseline to hit that shot. For two all for Eva Maioli. second set. We talked about the youth of Martina Hingis, the number one player in the world, women 16 and under. Lottie Dodd, back when it was just a little uh, local championship in the village of Wimbledon in 87, the youngest ever singles. Hingis with her win in Australia earlier this year, the youngest of this century when truly open play. So. Well, the last two, Tracy and Maureen, their, their careers were really cut short by injuries and Maureen Conley, her career ended by, guess what, being thrown off a horse. How apropos. And Hingis, very fortunate that her injury was not more serious. Ma Casellas was the, the next name on that list, and thank heaven she's come no, back yeah. after her stabbing. Fourth double fault for Hingis. Eva Maioli continues her high level of play. Low 30. Big question, though. Can she keep it up? She just has to play the ball, forget where she is, forget who she's playing, and just play some tennis. She seems to be doing just that. A little unlucky on that net cord. She had... Uh, that headed for a possible winner. Martina Hingis, on the other hand, not, still not pumped up. She has to get herself out of this rut. This is champions win matches even when they're not playing well, and we'll see if that's the case here. Seizing 
every opportunity and two Jones more break down. points. Very reliable forehand. I mean, that we always know that that's her best shot. She hits more winners, but she's made very few errors on that side. Tina Hingis loves pace, so if you're going to hit hard to her, at least move her out of her power zone, move her off the court. But anything right to her, she loves it, she craves it. 13th break point opportunity for Maioli. to take the lead in the second set. Up a set, up a break. Is this the end of the incredible run for the number one player, Martina Hingis? The championship is Maioli's if she can hold. Backhand winners as well. It's hard to get a ball past her the way she's playing this match. And it's easy to say that Martina Hingis should be hitting more drop shots, but she's, Maioli's been hitting with such depth, it's really hard to get a play on a drop shot. But any mid-court ball, I think you're gonna be seeing more drop shots and you're gonna be seeing a more aggressive Martina Hingis. But she has to choose the right shot to drop shot. And that one was a little bit too high. Again, it's behind the baseline, which is really not smart tennis, but this ball was so high she had to play to, to put that ball away. And she moves well. I mean, she's not a sprinter like a Steffi Groff, but she does move pretty well. Oof. Her Down. second double fault. Well, that's the first stroke that will go off. to watch as Martina Hingis threw her racket at that point. That's a warning given by cheer umpire Francois Perot. Hingis unhappy with herself. She nets his forehand. She meant to bounce that racket, but it flew behind her. usual sight to see Martina Hingis just struggling, running side to side, being pulled from corner to corners. through each point, keeping her favorite opponent on the run, a 4-2 lead in the second. One of the interested spectators, the president of the International Olympic uh, Committee, Juan Antonio Samaran, up from uh, Barcelona, or from Switzerland, uh, the IOC headquarters, Geneva. Two points from the championship, Maioli, and the pressure now all on Hingis. Well, I am stunned at the way 
Maioli is playing, but very often, Dick, you know, when you're match tough and you have a lot of tough matches coming into the final, that can only work in a positive way. And that match with Davenport down a set and full love, once she got out of trouble there, I think it just gave her tremendous confidence. And this is really one of the poorest performances I've seen with Martina Hingis for whatever reason. I, I, I hope it's not physical, but she's just very flat and no fire in those eyes today. Yeah, Maioli has extinguished all that fire. She's just outplayed her opponent and now is only five points from the title. Three more break points. She breaks Singus at love and will serve for the French Open title. Jana Lucic, uh, all from Croatia, rooting for this woman to become the first ever Grand Slam winner from that country. One of the few wild forehands of the day. Well, if Eva could use her head right now, you know, her tactic really should just stay out there, hit an, a lot of balls, and move Martina side to side. I mean, unfortunately, now everyone knows as broadcasted that, you know, she does have an injury, and it's hampering her movement. And it really must be hurting after a shot like that. That is not characteristically a, a normal shot for Martina yeah, Hingis. It really must be hurting. And two points from victory is Eva Maioli. This is the same injury she had at the Chase Manhattan Championships against Steffi Groff. Lost five sets, but she cramped in that match too. Match point for Maioli. And what an amazing development. The Tear Batu has been the home of the underdog and the big surprises this year. Maioli serving now with a championship on her racket. Oof. One match point denied. Anything in her power zone, she's going to still hit cleanly for a winner. She's going to go for her shots, but make her move a little bit. Wind blowing some of the clay into the face of Maioli. Second longest shot in the history of this Grand Slam event to win. You have to go back to 1933 when an unseated player, Margaret Scriven of Great Britain, won it. The second longest shot of all is right there in your picture, Eva Maioli. Congratulated by the number one player, Hingis. Well beaten today, injury or not, Maioli, the superior performer. She lost only 14 points on her serve, did not allow a break point against, as she built an impressive 6-4, 6-2 victory. She now part of French Open history. Two years ago on center court, she hit with a young ball boy, as you saw. 
her dreams of winning this, as she has indicated since she was a youngster watching on television, realized two years later on this Sunday in, or Saturday in Paris, Eva Maioli is the champion. Her coach and brother, Nick Boletari, a very strong influence for many years as she trained at his academy in Florida, helped to celebrate as uh, so many will be stunned who came here two weeks ago. Who would have predicted Eva Maioli would be the champion of France? And we'll have a very special uh, presentation of the trophy as they have asked our partner Chris Everett to make that presentation and this is the 100th anniversary.